Okay, this is Ben Dancy for Tip TV, joined here by um, Northwestern Boxing Stalwart and former manager of uh, Jamie Moore, Steve Wood. Are you alright today, Steve? Yeah, I'm good. Nice trip down from Manchester. No, so, yeah. uh, I had um, a little, little drive in the car, but we're here now. Obviously, we're here at the Match Room Barbecue today and they're announcing various things, upcoming fights and stuff. But um, a lot of people don't spare a lot of thought for the unsung promoters. The people like yourself have been in the game for years, we've invested in it, and sometimes it's been a bit of a labour of love and often run things at a loss. Is that true? Yeah, it is true, yeah. We do all the donkey work and then the uh, TV promoters uh, take the rewards for it, but we know what we do when we start, and you know, we all dream that we'll get a TV date, but yeah. it's just hard now, so obviously I've got to do the lucky work, and then when the, the kids get to a certain level, uh, the likes of uh, Eddie and, and Frank Warren, who's got the TV dates, um, take, take the kids over, but lucky enough, they let me carry on working with my manager, and they take the promotion over. Okay, uh, when did you first get a promoter's licence? Promoter's license uh, 18 years ago. Okay, was yeah. it harder then or harder now, or about the same to, to, to make um, it work? It, it's always been difficult. I mean, uh, there was a little purple patch where there was four to five promoters who had TV dates, and then you know that was a bit easy for me because I, I like to work with all the promoters, and so I could uh, <coughs> jiggle them around a bit more. But now there's less dates. You know, uh, there seems to be more fighters around, and uh, it's very difficult to, to keep them busy unless you put them on your shows. And obviously, the good fighters um, you want to try and get them on TV. So uh, I'd say yes. it's, it's getting harder. It's getting harder. Um, one thing that a lot of people, perhaps people who are not in the business, don't seem to understand, and they say that it didn't used to be the case, is these days a lad, if he doesn't sell 100 tickets minimum, mm. he doesn't get on the show unless he wants to go on the road, as they say in a, in a business. Um, has that always been the way, or do you think that the ticket, the mandatory ticket selling culture has become absolutely a lot more severe? Well, I think, you know, with the recession over the last four years, and hopefully we're starting to come out of it now, is that yeah. people, certainly like myself, used to fund it through uh, the other companies, and if the other companies are having it tight, it's difficult to, to justify putting sponsorship into the, the boxing business, and certainly in my case, I have had to, like, uh, tighten the strings a little bit and just say to the kids, come on, you know, we're all in this together. Together, I, me yeah, I remember, yeah. I remember because I've, I've heard some people say, there's an old pro um, who I talked to a fair bit on social media, his name's John Benny, and he said, I was never obliged to sell tickets, I've got a wage and fighters, mm. it's a promoter's job to sell mm. the tickets, the fighters, mm. all he's supposed to do is fight, but I did read an interview with you once in Boxing News and you said kids have got to realise it's not as simple as just turning up with their kit bags, because we are in this together. Yeah. How would yeah. you respond to people who, who try to make the claim that the promoter's job in its entirety is to sell a show? get a promoter's licence out and have a go at themselves yeah. and they soon change their mind, you know, I've had it before, you know, where people turn around and say, you know, this lad shouldn't have to uh, sell tickets, you know, um, well, what should I just do, get the money out and lose on every yeah. single boxer, obviously there's some boxers who come along and sell loads of tickets yeah. and they can carry the people who, who can't sell the tickets, but you've got to have a balance, you know, yeah. and if you've not got the balance, if you've got a show with six kids who don't sell six tickets and you've got to pay them all, you're going to lose yourself 30,000 quid. If you, if you want to be a champion and you... Um, um, and considering turning professional, perhaps you should consider mm. the fact that you've actually got a fan base before you do it. Um, mm. But um, in your time in boxing, what what is the f your favourite promotion that you've ever put on yourself? Most proudest moment. Favourite promotion. Um, I think the one that, that comes to, to mind is at Blackpool with, with, with Brian Rose when he won the um, British title yeah. outright against Sam Webb because you know me and yeah. Brian had to do that together and it's difficult because we won a purse bid which was like £32,000 yeah. you know, against the likes of Frank Warren and people like that and uh, we did it, um, didn't make any money out of it but everybody got paid and Brian got to win the Longdale belt and from the back of that he obviously got a deal with, with Eddie and Matchroom because yeah. they come to the show they seen that Blackpool was a place, it was bouncing, it was packed, it was a good atmosphere and obviously you know, Brian proved that he was a capable fighter then and you know, people like him who, who's had it, won the tap British title and then had to go back onto non-TV shows, it's wrong but yeah, it you know, doesn't seem it, it's how it is and so you've just got to fight your way through it and you know, the likes of Brian have had to sit down and say look Brian we've got to have a go on our own mate otherwise uh, you know, we, we, we're in trouble but you know, uh, we did that night and although it wasn't helping on my pocket you know, it helped Brian move on and um, obviously yeah. He's just fought for the world title, so uh, yeah, you know, it, it was a good right. reason behind doing it. Um, in your opinion, the biggest talent you've ever worked with in boxing? The biggest talent? Um, difficult that one. I mean, uh, Jamie Moore, I think, was just 
just short of making it to world level and uh, just talking about it today it's a shame that it didn't happen but he had various injuries and uh, a few issues with his weight which you know ultimately lost in the fight with Ryan Rhodes and, and that was a final eliminator for the WBC so yeah. he was one fight away from fighting for the world title and so, he stands out. so uh, you know uh, I think I think Jamie was pro probably the, the, the one for me at the moment and your favourite all-time fighter in history regardless of whether you have work with him or not um you know it's a difficult one because there's so many i like you know um but if we had to pick one i'd go sugar day leonard but, uh, i was just talking to eddie hearn and he said exactly the same thing right. i spoke to frank warren a little a few months ago and he said that and i mm. i think personally i think it's very hard to back against the sugar man it was absolutely wonderful fighter yeah um yeah. what what, ambi what personal ambitions do you still have in this game steve well i still want to get a world champion yeah um unfortunately we didn't get it with Brian the other week but we're, we're going back and having another go and hopefully uh, you know Brian will get the other opportunity you know, yeah. we've got a few other good kids in the stable who, who certainly will get opportunities to fight for the world title so I want to get a world champion and uh, I did I'd like to get my own uh, promotional deal from the TV and uh, yeah. see, see what I could do because you know I'll build them up to a certain level and uh, they passed over and uh, as I said before they're still having it influence in it but not a major influence so you know if we had it on my own it'd be interesting <coughs> to see if um, if we could do it you know um, i'd like the chance i wish you all the luck in the world with that steve i think you're one of the unsung heroes of the game thank you very much for your time yeah cheers thank, thank you, you.